Brad's going to get my laptop because I forgot to bring it upstairs before we recorded. Continuing with our sporadically updated series of videos detailing the lives of people and the occasional animal who possess neither the ability nor inclination to give what we lowly humans know as fucks, today is the turn of Diogenes the Cynic, an ancient Greek philosopher who spent the majority of his life telling people to suck his freely hanging dong. So who was Diogenes? Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, Diogenes was an ancient Greek philosopher who was legendary in his own time for his just inability to give a shit about pretty much anything. He originally hailed from the city of Sinope before he was banished for reasons that are entirely clear to historians. According to one version of Diogenes' life story, he was banished from the city of Sinope after he and his father were caught up in a scandal involving the debasement of local currency. Although there's evidence to support this, it's not entirely 100% clear if that's exactly why Diogenes decided to leave his hometown. So what did Diogenes do after leaving Sinope? Oh, you mean after being forced to leave Sinope? He moved to the city of Athens where he basically willingly adopted a lifestyle of total and abject poverty, seemingly just because he could. The story goes, after moving to Athens and deciding that owning possessions was for losers, Diogenes threw away or gave away everything he owned save for a set of rags to cover his dong and a single small wooden bowl. So the only things he owned in the entire world were some rags and one bowl. Yes, but I should point out that he did eventually get rid of even the bowl because uh, he used it to eat and drink out of. But apparently one day he saw a small homeless child walk up to a puddle in the street and use their cupped hands to scoop out the water. And he saw that and he stood out his bowl and went, bowls are bullshit, and just threw it straight onto the floor and went, no, nah, that kid's got the right idea. I'm an idiot. Why am I carrying around a bowl when I've already got them? I've got two bowls in the form of my hands. That bowl is a material possession. Good point. Surprised he didn't go that one step further after he saw a homeless guy covering his junk with his hands. He probably did. He did used to walk around naked sometimes. Yeah. You know, when he couldn't fight, oh, his rags fell apart. He didn't give a shit. If he woke up one day, because I should point out he used to sleep in the middle of the street. If he was tired, he'd just fall asleep in the middle of the street. Just literally in the middle? Yeah, yeah, even in the middle of the day. If he was tired, he'd sleep where he wanted. And if he woke up and his dick was hanging out of his, like, his rags, he's like, okay, I'm free balling it today. Um, obviously, the story of Diogenes getting rid of his bowl is one of the most famous about his life. So you'll be able to find paintings that you can put behind me where Diogenes has got his bowl and he's like really angrily throwing it into the floor. And it looks exactly like the moment from like the Lonely Island video threw it on the ground where you just realise, oh, fuck this. Boom! It's like it's in slow motion. It's like going to be part of your system. Just, <laughs> yeah, that's basically what it was. It's like, oh, here, Diogenes, would you like a wooden bowl? I don't need your bowl. Boom! I threw it on the ground. You must think I'm a joke. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what I won't be part of your system, bowl. <laughs> Just squaring up to a bowl. So, oh, you think you're better than me, bowl? You think you can tell me what to do? <laughs> Fuck you, bowl. The moral of this story is you can't trust the system. As you can imagine, Diogenes was similarly like today's when it came to earning money, and it's noticed that he would mostly beg for whatever little money he could get, which he'd use to buy food. However, if the going wasn't good that day, he wasn't above just eating food he found on the floor, or going through the trash and eating what he found there. So he just went through people's trash? This famous philosopher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about his philosophy in a sec, but we need to tell you like, the kind of man he was. Like, um, Diogenes would just, you know, he'd, if he found food on the street, he'd just eat it. He was also known as well, because apparently it was um, uncouth in ancient Greece at the time to eat in public. And Diogenes like, didn't really get this. So when he did have money, he'd buy food from the marketplace and he'd eat it in the marketplace. And people found that really strange and odd. Like, Diogenes not having a home like, didn't see the point of like, why would I buy food and then not eat it straight away? That's so pointless. Why would I take it somewhere else and say, I'm just going to eat it here? And people didn't like that. But I think the thing that sums up how little shits he gave about what other people's opinion of him was is the fact that he'd also occasionally just whip his dick out and masturbate whenever he felt the urge. And would also respond to like criticisms about his appearance and stuff by just, again, whipping out his dick and just pissing on the person. Just like, you know, urinating in their general direction, you know, showing what for. Oh, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? You insulted me, so I'm weighing on you. Oh, you can't do that. 
Says who? Speaking of bodily functions, it's known that Diogenes had a similar attitude when it came to shitting, as he felt that bathrooms were an indulgence, and as such, would just pop a squat and take a shit whenever he felt his stomach rumbling, even if he was mid-conversation with someone talking to him about philosophy. <laughs> That's a power move, that, isn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine, like, how... Like, I'm imagining doing it as well, I'm meaning, like, unbroken eye contact like a dog. Do you know when you get a dog and it shits on your carpet and it stares you right in the eyes, it does so, and you're there like, I, I guess, I guess you're in charge. I guess Fido, you win. <laughs> I'm imagining that. I'd like to just point out to you, Brad, and to the audience at home, the reason I compared Diogenes to a dog just then is because the philosopher is said to have greatly, greatly admired dogs and felt a special kinship with them because he felt they were superior to humans in every way. You know what, I'm not gonna disagree with that. I love dogs. We don't deserve dogs as a species. Dogs are too good. So what particularly about dogs did he think was better than humans? Well, Diogenes felt a special kinship with dogs and felt they were superior to humans in many ways because they, like him, ate and shit and slept wherever they damn well felt like. And he also appreciated how dogs seemed to instinctually know whether a person they were conversing with was friend or foe. Which is, I think is a reason, like, historically dogs have always been greatly respected by like, many ancient civilizations. I believe in ancient Ireland they had a special word to describe someone who'd earned the respect of a dog. He said people who earn the respect of a dog is like worthy of praise because it's difficult to, like, to earn a hound's respect and loyalty is impressive because the creatures instinctually have like, they know when someone's honourable. Which is nice, it's, it's the old uh, adage isn't it, of um, I don't trust a person who doesn't like dogs, but I trust, and I trust any dog who doesn't like a person. Do you know what the most adorable part of the fact that like, Diogenes had like this special kinship with dogs is? It's the fact that almost every like artistic representation of him like just like depicts him surrounded by dozens and dozens of dogs. Like all like all the like pictures of him just showing like just dogs following him everywhere he goes. He's like the Pied Piper of dogs. Like wherever like Diogenes went, dogs would follow him because dogs fucking loved him. And he's like, yeah, man, dogs, dogs are cool. I'll share my food with dogs. I'll share my wisdom with dogs. And it's like, apparently you just sleep like half naked in the street, just surrounded by dogs. So you know what? To a lot of people, including myself, that sounds like a dream, that. Just having the undying loyalty of like many, many dogs. That'd be glorious. I'd live a life of abject poverty if it meant I was continually followed around by like a hundred dogs. Although Diogenes avoided most indulgences, he did afford himself a single luxury in the form of a large barrel. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Oh, sorry, mate. I had no idea there was a naked man in the barrel. Why is there a naked man in the barrel? Why did he have a barrel? Oh, he lived inside of it. Yeah, I should point out, Diogenes just lived inside of a big barrel. That so, used... You were using the word luxury quite loosely. Yeah, there, he, li he lived inside of a barrel, which is too hot or too cold to like, either protect him from the wind and snow or the sun. And sometimes well, he'd sleep inside of a big ceramic pot located in a marketplace. <laughs> And people came to eventually appreciate, oh, that's just like, you know, that's just like Diogenes, just in his, like, you know, in his big pot. Surrounded by dogs. Yeah, surrounded by dogs. Like, you know which one he's hiding inside of, because it's, um, it's the one surrounded by dogs. But no, I'm just thinking, like, the dogs protected him while he was asleep by just, like, strategically shitting a big minefield in front of him. Because I'm mentioning that because I want you to put in the clip. Uh, remember Balls of Steel, the prank show? Yeah. The one with the annoying devil goes, I think he goes to London Bridge at, like, three o'clock in the morning with an entire bucket of dog shit. And he places for, I think, a full, like, 10 foot by 10 foot, the entire path on London Bridge, the footpath, and just puts, like, 400 individual pieces of dog shit. <laughs> and then he just waits for the camera and films it. Watch the poo-poo! Watch the poo-poo! It was a great bit with a guy on a bike, and the guy on the bike's coming up, and he sees all the dog shit. <laughs> He's like, that, that. He's trying to avoid it all. <laughs> I imagine that's how he was protected in his barrel. Like, Diogenes was protected in his barrel just by this constant, just white, big old... <laughs> this barrier. This aura of dog shit. <laughs> This stuff all sounds pretty ridiculous for someone you said is supposed to be a philosopher. Oh, he was a philosopher. He was a student of the guy who studied under Socrates, and um, he was one of the people who like um, basically invented the school of Stoicism. But if you want to find out more about that, go look him up on Wikipedia. We're here to talk about the stupid bullshit he did, because that's way funnier. And he was well known for a number of like philosophical stunts that he'd do 
you know, obviously to like, uh, make people ask questions and things like that. And one of the most famous is that he'd walk around during the middle of the day with a large lamp, like he'd just shove into people's faces randomly. And people asked him what he was doing, he'd go, looking for an honest man. <laughs> Was Diogenes known amongst other philosophers? Oh, he was very well known, and um, like his wild man beard and like general habit of just, like, walking around with his dick out or randomly shitting in the middle of the street belied like an incredibly keen intellect. And like eventually, a lot of philosophers who like you know knew of him would like come to begrudgingly respect him for his intellect and wit. Um, one of which was Plato, which uh, Diogenes would have uh, hated because he didn't like Plato because he felt like he misinterpreted the work of Socrates and he would go out of his way to annoy Plato in any way that he could. What kind of things would he do to annoy Plato? Uh, one of um, Diogenes' favourite things to do was just randomly go into Plato's lectures when they were halfway done and just start yelling at him. He'd sometimes I'd just sit in the front row and loudly eat food to distract him when he was giving speeches and lectures. And my personal favourite is that sometimes, if he felt particularly like being a dick that day, he'd go into his lecture, take a shit on his seat and leave. <laughs> No, wait, give us a minute, just need a minute. Oh, no. Oh, that has, in a very literal sense, backfired. We yeah, I love the idea that he goes to Plato's lectures and he's like, for fuck's sake, Diogenes, what are you doing here, mate? And he's sat in the front row of his feet up, like, eating a big apple. No, he's eating, what's the loudest food you can imagine? This is like being in the cinema, isn't it? No, he's eating Doritos. Do you know when you're in the cinema? And you in see ancient that... Greece. No, but like, do you know when you're in the cinema, like, yeah. and you see that person, like, everyone tries to be quiet, don't they? And you get a one dickhead who whips his phone out and it's a big old bag of Doritos. And then you hear him put his hand right in the bottom, crunch them all, it's like, fuck off! Are there any other examples of Diogenes annoying Plato? Yes, perhaps the most famous example of it is the time when Plato defined man as a featherless biped. So Diogenes went and got a chicken, plucked all its feathers, went into one of his lectures, put a chicken on the floor and said, look, I brought you a man! And Plato was so embarrassed that he revised his description of a man to be a featherless biped with broad flat nails. <laughs> <laughs> and he was famous for doing stuff like that, of just like doing stupid stunts to like make other people look stupid and like, you know, bring them around to his way of thinking. Because obviously like he thought his way of living was the best. And to be fair, he got to hang out with dogs all day, so I'm not going to argue that he wasn't. He did also eat out of his hands and shit on the floor. Yeah, but then he got to hang out with dogs. Are you trying to say like, that hanging like, out with dogs trumps everything else? Yes, yeah, so like on one hand, yeah, he did live in a barrel and he did like eat food off the floor and like, you know, masturbate in public. But, a lot of dogs. You got to pet a lot of dogs. You can't, you, you do not know the amount of people in my life right now, I would love to go into their place of work when they're trying to do their work and just shit in front of them. And then, what, then they look out the window while their boss is like yelling at them. And they see me running around half naked with like 40 dogs going, <laughs> my life's glorious. <laughs> George and reputation eventually saw him earning the kudos of no less an authority than Alexander the fucking Great who said to have been so impressed by the stories he heard about the philosopher that when visiting Corinth, he insisted upon meeting him. So how did this meeting go? Well, before I talk about it, I should mention that this is one of the few stories about Diogenes' life that hasn't been like 100% confirmed. Like, people aren't sure if it's just a story people told about him, or if it's a legend, or if it's like an exaggeration of what actually happened, but it's too funny not to share. So according to legend, Alexander the fucking Great was walking through Corinth and he's like, I would like to meet the legendary like Diogenes. And they took him to this fucking barrel where Diogenes is lying there half naked, just sunning himself. And Alexander goes to him and like, ah, Diogenes, the great philosopher. Diogenes doesn't fucking move. Doesn't even react, doesn't even glance in his direction. Alexander a bit taken aback, was like, hi there, Diogenes. Is there anything I, the great Alexander, can do for you? I can give you anything you ever desired. All you need to do is say it and it's yours. And Diogenes, without even turning his head to acknowledge the fact that like, one of the greatest military commanders in history, one, like, a guy who was basically deified as a god during his time on Earth, was speaking to him and said, move out of my light. I wish for you to take approximately three steps to the right. It's simple. You are blocking my sunshine. Effectively saying, yeah, if you want to do something, move out of my fucking way, because I'm trying to get some rays here, man. I'm trying to get that vitamin D, get out of my way. Alexander the Great is said to have been so like, impressed by the ballsiness displayed by Diogenes at that moment that he turned to his men and said, you know, if I weren't Alexander, I'd quite like to be Diogenes. And Diogenes heard this and responded to Alexander, you know what, if I were not Diogenes, 
I would also still want to be Diogenes. <laughs> and then went back to sunning his balls. <laughs> and Alexander was like, cool. And just, just left and just fucked off. He's like, if this is all he wants, that's fine. <laughs> The best part about this is like that Diogenes is like reported as being the only person to have ever gotten away with doing something like that to Alexander's face because Alexander was just like so like shocked that he had the gall to even do that. It's like very much like Alexander is probably the most powerful man on the face of the earth at that point. And he walked over to this guy and said, what can I do for you? Like he had the power to pretty much do anything and his only request was move. Even in death, Diogenes displayed an aptitude for non fuck giving and responded to the question, what do you want doing with your body after you die? By simply saying, throw it over the walls of the city so the wolves may eat it. Really? That's what he wanted? Yes, and as you can imagine, people were in as incredulous as you are right now about that request. And that obviously pissed off Diogenes. Like, he didn't give a fuck. He's like, okay, if you're that bothered, give my dead body a stick to fight off the wolves. And obviously people like, sagely pointed out, but Diogenes, when you're dead, you won't be able to swing the stick to fight off the wolves, which he used to point out, okay, if my body lacks the ability, you know, to fight off the wolves, it probably lacks the ability to care what's happening to it. Meaning, yes, Diogenes used his own death as a final way of imparting his philosophy on others and dunking on them one last goddamn time. Yeah! You had a dog, didn't you? I've had many dogs. I like dogs. You're dogs are my big favourite. Tell us about your dogs. I can talk about my dogs. I'll talk about Penny, um, which is the weirdest thing. I think I've mentioned Penny in another video, potentially. But we used to call her Creeping Jesus. Because she thought, well, and this is why I love dogs. They've always got a personality. And she thought she was so goddamn smart. She used to sleep in bed with me. But I used to say, Penny, go to your bed. And then it gets like two in the morning. And I'd hear, duh, duh, duh. and I'd see my door and I'd see like, duff, duff, duff. I see a little nose come in and sniff, and it goes to the floor. And I'm like, I'm pretending to be asleep at this point. And I could hear it, and I'd hear the door creak, and then you hear, duh, duh, duh. And then I hear the sniffing at my feet, because my feet hang off the edge of my bed when I visit her. Because I, I'm too tall for my childhood bed now. And I'd, she sniffed my feet, and it's like, as if that's not going to wake me up. If I wasn't awake before, I'd be waking up then. And she sniffed my feet, and then she'd put her feet, and she'd go, because obviously my feet are hanging out the edge of my quill, put her nose in there, which obviously tickled the shit out of me, like, uh, no, trying not to kick her. And she'd put her head in, and then she'd go, uh, 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 and then crawl all the way up the side of the goddamn bed. And then she'd like nestle right into my armpit. And then what I'd do every single time is I'd get the, the entire quilt and just go, Penny! And she'd just go, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, you naughty dog. And then I'd, put, I'd say, you know what to do. And what she'd do, she'd just go, go, oh, go on then, put the quilt back on. And <laughs> she used to do that every time. We used to call her creeping Jesus because she thought she was so smart. Eh. Eh. It's just that creep all the way upstairs. Why Jesus? I don't know, it's just something my mum came with. I don't know. The words creeping Jesus always crap me up. She also as well had a habit of we had a single um, like black carpet in our um, hallway and she had a habit of sleeping on that because it was the one part of our floor that wasn't laminate. But she was also brindle, so you couldn't see her at night. So I call her the submarine because what you do is you won't be able to say, like, where is, because that's something I'd lose where she was in the house because you like, look into the hallway and if it's quite dark, you don't see her. So what I do is I just get like, a packet of crystal and I'd crinkle it and you see her head pop up. And it'd turn around like that, and that's why I called her the submarine. She'd go, Penny! Duh, 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 duh. And they'd look at her, I loved her. <laughs> but yeah, that was always, it always cracked me up when she did that. She thought she was so smart. It's like, oh, you'll never catch me. Duh, 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 duh. It's like, I can see you, Penny. I can see you. Like, head, but, like, the fact she headbutted her way into the room and thought she was being quiet. Oh, it's like when I put a sheet over her head, and she just got so, like, she was just so content. It's like, okay, this is my life now. And you just saw like the dog shapes go, curl up. It's like, okay, that's her life now. Just under this sheet, she accepts it. <sighs>